your Taku. Yeah, I guess. No! Oh, what the frick? Oh, that's new. Oh, okay. How's it going, everybody? Hoodlumut here, back with some more Chaos Head Noah. And uh, last time, we finished Demi's ending. Um, it didn't reveal a ton to us other than just some backstory for Demi to make us, like, I guess, like her more. And I don't know if you'd say relate, but at least make us, like, sympathize with her, with her and, you know, want to root for her and all that. Um, and now we are in the final stretch. I can finally say that. Holy crap. It has taken so long to get through Chaos Head Noah. I don't know why. I don't know why it's taken so much longer. I didn't feel like it should have been that much longer, but you have to account for the fact that I did like a, a 12 episode, uh, like, like episode, 12, 12 episode episode, like split up into two different episodes, right? That was 12 different recording sessions. So it's like that, like we should not be at whatever number we're at right now. We should be like 12 ahead of that. If you think of it that way, it's like, I don't know. Dang, it's just, it's like, and, and if I remember looking correctly, like it, it said that Chaos Had Noah was supposed to be like shorter in terms of the length of the story of like how many hours it should take you to get through it um, than Steins Gate. So I have no idea why it's taken me so much longer, but it has. Anyway, we are finally here at the blue sky ending, which it doesn't say it's the true ending, but it's, 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 gotta be because it's the very last one and uh let me take a look here at the guide to see if it says anything in particular about this ending that i need to know about ahead of time i don't remember if it does um yeah no it says that yeah it's just right in the title and there will be a series of choices eventually that i should try and do myself so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna try to solve them myself first and then we'll probably have to go back and use the guide to actually figure out what they actually are, unless I'm too stubborn and want to solve it myself, whatever that is. So, uh, yeah, I don't even know. I don't know what to expect, but I've been excited to see what the actual end is like because we've seen all these other endings and things keep... It's just, all these endings remind me of the uh, uh, the Gehenna ending. and uh, The Gehenna ending in freaking Steins Gate Zero, where it's just, all of it's just sad. It's just all sad in its own way, you know, for the most part. So I want I want something to work out for once. Just just once, please. <laughs> anyway, let's just get into this, shall we? Chapter 10, Blue Sky. Wait, so is this just... Oh, this is picking up right after... Okay, from the first ending. Ah, okay. So this is after they... Wait, but this is after Bond dies! No! He was supposed to live! What do you mean? You can't do this. You cannot let Bond stay dead. No, they have to bring him back. They have to, like, delusion him back into existence. Or something. Like, you can't do this. No freaking way. Why? No, dude. Oh, man. Alright, I'm gonna... I'm still holding out. Still holding out for hope, man. But uh, I guess we'll just read from here. Nishi Joe Nanami prays. In a hospital, admitted alongside her brother, curled up in the corner of a waiting room brimming with injured souls, clutching her real brother's wrinkled hand, enduring the pain in her right hand, she closes her eyes and prays for the safety of her other brother. Kusnoki Yua prays by the rubble of a collapsed building in a container that lay buried by it all, clutching one of his anime girl figures, enduring the pain in her chest from seeing his figures desecrated by the earthquake and ensuing fires. She closes her eyes and prays for the safety of the boy who forgave her. Kishimoto Ayase prays. At Suime Academy, 
now an evacuation shelter, looking to the sky from the rooftop, clutching her paperback book of legends, enduring the malicious pain of the innumerable delusions concealing the collapsed Shibuya. She closes her eyes and prays for the safety of the boy who listened to her song and her story. So it seems like, I think this is a little different than uh, how the original one was. I think they said a little bit different stuff. Like they didn't talk about the Book of Legends, I don't think, or the uh, the anime girl fi figure and stuff like that. So at least I don't remember it. So if they didn't, then it seems like they're bringing in stuff from the other endings that we saw from each of their own specific endings. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, though. I guess I'd have to cross-reference. Orihara Kozue prays at Shinsen Station on a dimly lit platform, clutching Aoi Sena's trembling hand, enduring the pain of her injured leg. She closes her eyes and prays for the safety of the boy, her classmate, whom she spoke with in her inner voice. Aoi Sena prays, sitting beside her father on the ground, clutching her father's cold hand, enduring the pain of regret, having not been honest to the very end. She closes her eyes and prays for the safety of the boy who tried to grant her wish, no matter how clumsily. Sakihara Dini prays, lying on the cold floor, tightly clutching her own hands extended toward him, enduring the tightening in her chest from when she saw him covered in wounds. She closes her eyes and prays for the safety of the boy whom she swore to protect, yet instead came to save her. And Bon? And Bon? Please? I was unable to do anything. It was you who acted. As a result, everyone has had their eyes on you. Mutual recognition of you has long since been established. From this point forward, no, already, you are. I... I am... Who... are you? Oh my goodness, okay, wait, okay, yeah, that's different. You are me, I don't know who's talking right now, so... Uh... Uh... You are me? No, uh, what? I don't know who's talking right now. Uh, uh, no, no, we're we're different. Oh, frick! I am you. Uh, uh, no, because we're different people. If if this is supposed to be Takami and. I, I think if I remember correctly, this was this was real Takami talking to delusion Takami, so No, we're different, right? Because you said that you made a whole new person. So it would make sense that we're not the same. Like a whole new entire being was created, right? So we're not the same person. We just look the same, technically. We should look the same anyway. And probably have like minds that are similar, but like diverged because of lifestyle? I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna say no. There's no me. Wait, yes there's no me? Or no, there there is a me? No, like, like, no, 
there's no me, like that that's not a true statement, or no, there's no me. Like I can't tell what I'm supposed to answer here. That's that's worded kind of tricky. That's like a like a like a double negative. Um so like yes, there is no me or no, there is a me, I think is the way I'm supposed to look at that. So Yeah uh there is a me, so no like that's a double negative, so it should be a positive, right? So I guess There's no you. Okay, double negative again. No, there is a you. Right? What? What is this right now? What am I answering? Also, all the images from before are coming up. Yes, there's no you or no, there's... It's gotta be no. It has to be no. It's a double negative, right? Ew, gross. I am not me. This is like Orihara mindset right now. Like, who are we type of... Um... I am not me. No, you are you, right? No, you... I am me. Or, yes, I am not me. No, I am not me. No. You are... You are you, I think? So I still think it's no. I'm, am I just gonna answer no for every one of these? I think it's no. You're my big bro. Ew, ew, ew! Don't bring that back! What the frick? I, I buried that! That ending is dead! Why are you bringing it back? You're my big bro. Um... Well, that was a delusion, right? This was a delusion. So... No, I'm not your big bro? Or yes... Yes, I am your big bro. Technically, no, right? We're not her big bro. That is a lie. She's a delusion. She's not real. The real Nanami came and tried to, to get rid of her, but we accepted this delusion. So, she wasn't real. She was a figment of, of our imagination. Therefore, we are not her big bro, right? That makes sense, doesn't it? That has to be it. That has to be. That has to be it. No. No. You're Nishijo-kun. Uh... Okay, yes, technically, right? I mean, we're delusion, Takami. That's technically a yes, right? Now it, now it would be a yes. I think? Because that's actually true? Because we're a real person, we're another Takami? Or, wait a well, no, because that's the last name. I was going to say because I thought technically uh, uh, Dini calls us Taku, and then she calls the real Takumi Takumi. So I thought maybe, but she's it's not saying Takumi-kun. It's saying Nishijo-kun, which is the last name. That's the form, uh, formal use of or, or way to call somebody, whatever. So that's, that's a true statement. We are technically Nishijo. But we're just like a clone. We're like, we're our own person, but just a copy. A copy with like a new mind or whatever. Kind of, sort of. I I don't know, dude. This is very existential. I'm going to say yes. Did I ruin it? Oh, I don't know. I guess I won't know. You are Takami. Um... Okay, so this is what I was saying before. So technically we were Taku, but we are still Takumi. So technically, yes, that's still technically true. But we're like, again, like, I guess it's just a nickname. That's how she separated us. So it's not really saying that we're, our name is different, right? I'm, I think I'm thinking too hard on this. No, we are Takumi. We are the same, but different. We're the same... But we're also not the same. So, yes, you are Takami. I think. I think that's the right thing. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna say yes, you are Takami. You're Takami, Sean! Uh. 
Sure, yes, I guess. I think. Okay. I'm sure I screwed this up, but... You're Nishijo. Uh... Yes. I get. I again. I, I. I don't know. I don't. You're Taku. Yeah. I guess. I sure. Yes. I am in fact. I am me. Yes. Yes. I. 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 I, I sure. <laughs> like I, I, I don't, I can't really. There's nothing to decipher here, really. This is, I am a delusionary existence. Okay, this one I can actually talk about a little bit more. So, so, technically, you are a delusion, but you're a delusion that's mutually recognized yourself with everyone else. So now you're a real person. You're your own real person, according to the real Nishi Jotakami, the OG, right? According to Shogun, you're real, so you're not actually delusionary. You are actually real. So, no, I am not a delusionary existence. That is not a true... I am I am a delusionary existence is not a true statement. Right? Because we're actually like a real person now. A delusion brought into reality. So, no, I'm going to say no, I'm not a delusionary existence. I exist. Yes. Yes, you exist. And they're going through every CG right now. Oh, here we go. We're right at the end, I think. I am Nishijo Takami. Yes. I am... The moment I heard that voice. Huh? Did I do it? Did I do it right? Uh, uh? My consciousness stabilized me. Did I do it right? <laughs> Did I get it right the first time? Wait a minute. Is this skippable? I just... I'm just gonna check. Is this skippable? This... I don't think I can skip this. I can skip this! This is all stuff we've seen! Wait! So wait! Oh, frick! Yeah, so this is all stuff we've seen! So did I... I screwed up then. Yeah, it's the same ending. It's the same ending. No! I got the wrong ending. Yeah, this is all just gonna... Oh, dang it! Yeah, I did. I did, I did the wrong thing. Where did I screw up at? Dang it! Oh, I was so hyped for a second there. I must have overthought something. Oh, any deviation... Okay, so, yeah, before I look at the spoiler, it says any deviation from this will result in ending A, so I got ending A again. Okay. Alright. Can I skip this? I don't think it'll let me skip it. Shoot! Okay. So, yeah, I guess I gotta follow it. We'll see where I screwed up, because... Bro, I like, how am I supposed to, like, figure that crap out? How would anyone do this without a guide? I am me. You are me. I am you. What, what the frick? Like, especially in a game where everything is a delusion. You know what I mean? Like, how am I supposed to know? I'd, like, you'd have to just trial and error it, error it until you get to, like, the end. Like, until you finally figure out the combina combination. I can't talk right now, dude. I'm friggin' my brain is all over the place. Man, I don't get it. I don't I don't know what the right ones were supposed to be. And again, you're answering yes or no's to stuff like I I am not me. Yes or no. What? Like that's that's a trick. Like again, I have to work with double negatives. It's like I can't I can't answer that straightforwardly, you know? Okay, here we are. You are me. So apparently that's yes. That's a yes. Okay, I screwed up right from the beginning then. I was done right from the get-go. Because I, I said no. I said no for like a long time. <laughs> you are me? Oh, maybe like Takami is me. But but we're We're not. We're two different people. So what do you mean? Like he said that you're you're 
you're me, but also not me. So technically that still means you're not me. You're just, you're just a duplicate of me, but you're not the same person as me, right? Whatever. Okay. I guess that's it. Which means the next one is yes. Cause it's, I am you. Yeah. Yep. And it is, it's yes. So what's the next one then? There's no me. Right? And I got that right. Okay, so that's no. Because that's a double negative. There's no you. Also a double negative. That's That was a no. I am not me. A double negative. So that was a no. So I think I just... Did I just screw up the first two? But it doesn't make sense that those are yes. Oh no, I did. I screwed up this one too. You're my big bro. But they showed me the delusion version of her, so I thought, no, you're not, you're not, I'm not your big bro, you're, you're freaking fake. So, okay, but that's apparently a yes, so. And the rest of them from here on out are yes. So yeah, I just screwed up a couple of those within the, uh, within the, the, the beginning there for the most part, but it's just because the one I can see, like, okay, yeah, they wanted me to say you're my big bro and whatever. Okay, that I can understand. But, like, but the first two, I I felt like the whole game was making the point that we are different. We are, like, two different people. So why did it say... Why, why was it yes to you are me and I am you? I don't get it. Okay. All right, so this should lead to the proper ending. Just gotta say yes through all these. Ah, okay. Dang, I thought I had that. That would have been sick, but I was like, no, it's all. it all sounds the same. And it's because it was. Oh, well. I am a delusionary existence. Wait, so this one, oh yeah, no, I got this one wrong too. So this is, this is also a yes. So like yeah, like that's what I was saying. Like it could it could have been either or, because he said like yeah I I delusioned you into existence, but you're also real. Like you're not you're not a fake person now. You're actually a real person. So like okay, whatever game. I don't think that's fair, but whatever. I exist. Yes. Yeah, you know, we got all those. So yeah, I screwed that one up too. I am Nisha Joe Takami. Here we go. Okay. I am. Taku! The moment I hear that voice. Oh, it stayed the same. Did it? Wait, maybe not. Nope. Okay, that's a new song, though. Okay. My consciousness stabilizes me. The once swirling world converges all at once. Okay. My desort takes shape as a converging chaos. I return to my shape as myself. The world returns to its shape as the world. I am... ME! Okay. Kind of slaps. I like this music. I can see clearly now. All my wounds healed. My top and bottom halves are connected. I'm standing on my own two feet. The pain is entirely gone. Serenity fills my heart. You did well to overcome the delusions. I entrust you with the last of my power. I notice Beamy at the edge of my vision. She's okay. She's looking at me. Tears are falling down her face. Don't cry. Oh! Yeah, this is new! Whoa! What is this? Oh, her D-sword. Oh, all their D-Swords! Whoa! Hey! Let's go! Wait! <laughs> oh, what's that one? I don't remember that one! 
Was that you was? No, you was over there, I think. So whose is that? Dude, this kind of goes. I like this music. Directly behind me, space begins to warp. Prayers are brought into creation. The six gospels. Or perhaps, the impulses of six spirits. All too pure. All too graceful. All too dignified. All too sharp. All too ferocious. All too destructive. And all too awash with an ill-omened beauty. I accept every piece of them. The six blades writhe above. Wistfully, or perhaps rapturously, they raise their shrieks. Whoa! Whoa! Is he gonna put them all into one big sword like Ayase initially said? Whoa! Yeah, he is! Whoa! Oh, dang! Whoa! Let's see it! Oh, <laughs> look at it! Dude! Excalibur! And fuse with my D-sword. Summoning my strength, I grasp the D-sword's hilt. I ascertain its feeling. My arms work better than ever. I've completely regenerated. My, this is quite fascinating. You... Darn monstrosity! I focus my eyes on Norose. Sure, I'm a monster. But this is... So I can rescue Bimi. So I can destroy Noah too. The delusion that I wished for. Let's see it! I want to see the sword! Let me see it! Norose's response is swift. He has yet to harvest the code sample of Nishijo Takami. The delusion was supposed to corner the boy and shatter his psyche. But now the tables have turned. And that he cannot allow. Okay. Norose closes the gap between himself and Takami. Taking a specific angle, he swings his D-sword from below. With a D-sword that can cleave any known object, he diagonally carves through Takami's chest. The target's durability makes no difference. Killing a person with it is as simple as slicing through a block of gelatin. So it's all the same, but, but the sword combination is different. That, that was a different element. With one quick swipe from Norose, Takumi's body is split into pieces. His head, right arm, and right shoulder all slide cleanly off his body. Internal organs litter the floor, but not a single drop of blood falls with them. The lower half of Takumi's body begins to give way. He braces himself and manages to plant his feet. In the following moment, the cross-section of his wound begins to undulate and squirm. Yeah? A bubbling noise ensues. In this following moment, the cross-section of his wound begins to undulate and squirm. And then, he regenerates. Unharmed. Unaffected. Even though his body was cleaved apart a mere second ago, already, a new head right arm and shoulder were born. His old head and internal organs remain where they slid free from him. I already blocked off my sense of pain. With a single step, Takami approaches Norose. Norose clicks his tongue, then turns over his D-sword. By virtue of casting aside your bodily form, any form whatsoever is within your means, I take it. You can thank the delusion you showed me for that. 
he is unable to retain his shape as a human being. He took in the delusion and made it his own. This is not regeneration, but replacement. Missing parts replenish. Flesh and bone are produced once again, all propagating infinitely from the dust within his body. His shape is not fixed. Like an amoeba, like a collection of slime, he can change himself freely. That is the reason Takami calls himself a monster. Takami takes yet another step toward Norose. Norose's frustration increases. Gripping the hilt, he thrusts his D-sword at the approaching Takami. Takami's head finds itself between a colossal pair of scissors. Without a brain, you can't have any more delusions. Now can you? Ooh. Yeah, we know how all this goes, so I'm curious what, what the difference is going to be. Takami's head is crushed. It splits like a watermelon. Blood and gray matter burst forth. Everything above the neck is gone. And yet, Takami's body remains. Well, yeah, he just cut off his head just a second ago because he, like, cut off half his body with it. So, like, I don't know why he thought that would work. <laughs> Regeneration. Replacement. Is instantaneous. As soon as his heel hit the ground. As if nothing happened. As if he was entirely replaced. His head returns right where it was, without a single scratch. Norose awakens to an understanding. He cannot win this fight. Physical attacks with his D-sword are useless. The delusional attack denying the boy's reason for existence was taken in and used for an alternate purpose. The current Nishijo Takami is all too removed from human normalcy, all too distorted of an existence, all too fitting as a monster. And yet, despite it all, Norose has no intention of conceding. His next thought is to utilize Noatu's power to bombard Takami with innumerable antiparticles. Bombardment with antiparticles can transform any known existence into negative matter, ending ultimately in self-collapse. If disruption from the surface is not viable, then collapse must be undertaken from within. Oh! Oh, the music changed! Okay. Uh, you're on the right track. Norose's thoughts were read by Takami. What? Dude, this opera music is like Gurren Lagann. <laughs> the shine of Takami's D-sword transforms from red to black. A black flame envelops the blade. It wriggles forth, extending outward. Its shape resembles that of... A serpent, right? A dark, colossal serpent. Yep. But the music's different. And then it shall appear. Yeah, there it is. Is that what the old one? I don't think that's what the old one looked like. I think this is new. It roams throughout the dome as if constrained by it. Toward the ceiling. Toward the floor. As though it is licking them up as though it is scraping them away. It simply consumes. A dark, colossal serpent of wicked hearts. A being capable of devouring all corrosion, shattering the wicked-hearted king's body itself, and instilling heterogeneity in its homogeneity. Yup. The body of the Colossal Serpent is composed of antiparticles. With a mere touch, it can send any known object into self-collapse. A torrent of destruction composed of near-infinite greed. Can't say I'm all that fond of tentacle porn, though. There and then, Takami's D-sword swings, its pointed tip fixed on Norose. Whoa! 
Yo! Ooh! The dark serpent, winding itself in a coil, curves its body like a whip. Its jaw snaps at Norose. Such power! It can't be! Not once has Norose ever seen such a phenomenon from a D-sword. He cannot discern whether it was a hidden power of all Gigalomaniacs, or merely Takami's delusion. The dark fangs erode Norose's body, and he begins to collapse. All too slowly, like a frog slowly dissolving in the belly of a snake. Darkness swallows him. He feels no pain. By nature, his death should be instant. But that is not what Takami wishes for. Realizing this, Norisei's lips twist into a derisive smile. Norisei had no fear of death. One could say that the ideals he pursued were accomplished with the completion of Noah too. So he's got to throw him into it again, right? Even if you kill me, no other person can approach Noah too. A perpetual motion machine. That is what you are dealing with. Its administration over humanity will last until the end of time. It does not merely sit idle and watch from afar. Rather, it is a man-made god which interferes for the sake of mankind's happiness. Norose is God's inventor, so to speak. As long as Noah II continues to exist, mankind will not perish, and the eternal utopia Norose seeks will become real. However, but you can approach it, can't you? What? The serpent's body wriggles and writhes with Norose in its grasp, lifting his body into the air. If that's the case, then you're the key. Norose is astonished, but soon enough, his face changes into an expression of pure agony. The serpent swings about his body with ease. Takami shoots a glance at Themi. Their eyes meet. Just what is Themi feeling as she watches him? Reading her mind would be effortless. And yet, Takami does nothing of the sort. It seems I was able to save you after all. He quickly averts his eyes. His gaze then shifts to the still humming Noah II, the throne of God where none may stand foot. A cradle which shows naught but dreams of bliss. I'm sorry. He apologizes to no one in particular. I very well might be an enemy of humanity. The eternal utopia this device would bring. A future without conflict. Takami will extinguish them with his own two hands. Is that right? Or is it wrong? Takami cannot give the answer to that. But it's pretty common in mythology. Even gods tend to slack off when women are involved. <laughs> That's why I, too, will sacrifice the happiness of mankind out of love for a girl. Takami, D-sword in hand, bends his arms in a giant arc. Break through! Yeah, there it is. He thrusts it forth. Just like a javelin, the colossal serpent of darkness charges straight ahead. With the bait known as Norose impaled by its tip, it flies straight toward Noah too. An enormous serpent of antiparticles, capable of terminating any known object. It had no will of its own. Thus, it is not something that could be warped nor distorted. 
with the greedy impulse to destroy. Using Norose as the key, the delusional barrier is easily smashed to pieces. Whoa! Yeah, that's all the same, other than the swords combining. Oh, and I think that's... Oh, yeah, no, that's the same, because his, his sword breaks, right? Kind of remember that. Okay. When did the rain begin to fall? There was just a huge explosion, and its blast... Its blast blew my body away like it was nothing more than a rag doll. Next thing I knew, I found myself lying here. Those eyes are always watching me. The stare pierces through the thick, pitch-black rain clouds and pours down on me like rain. Don't look at me. My body won't stop shivering, not from the chill of the rain, but rather the ice-cold rubble pressing against my back, so terribly cold. A gaze pierces me from the heavens, who it belongs to I can't say, as if to escape it I raise my head to look at the environment around me. There I see a ruined city, there I see despair, there I see death, there I see nothingness. Not a soul is there. Not a soul is moving. Not a soul is left alive. The only thing I can hear is the sound of the rain continuing to pour. At this rate, everything, both the living and the dead. Will it all be gently embraced and washed away? How nice would it be if it was all just a delusion? But that doesn't seem to be the case. I can't move my body. I can't move my eyes and neck, and even then just barely... I can't use that monstrous power from before. My body is shivering, and that's nothing more than a psychological something, phenomenon. It isn't happening by my own will. I don't want my body to tremble. If I can't move it freely, then it isn't my body. Or maybe I've never had free will ever since I was born. Nobody knows exactly where the, where the soul resides. Bearing that in mind, how can anyone say that there is a soul inside this body of mine? But... Then where exactly am I now? Am I really here? Yeah, this is all new. Am I anywhere at all? In this shattered world, where all stands still, where all that can be heard is the reign of death. Okay, a single solitary existence begins to emerge from the sea. Who are you? Is your skin so pale? Because it's been numbed by the chill of the rain? Or is it because you're already dead? And yet, the girl isn't shivering, and those eyes of hers nearly hidden by her bangs. This is all going similarly. Don't look at me. They look so terribly sad. They look as if they hold a hint of madness. They look as if they reflect nothing. If... If she and I were the only ones left in the world, if we stared into each other's eyes like this for all eternity, would my world be reduced to the reflection in her eyes? Would her world be reduced to the reflection in my eyes? The only thing reflected in her eyes is me. The only thing reflected in her my eyes is her. When I think of it that way, hey. Suddenly, a flash of static reaches my ears. One, whoop. Okay, she lowers her head and spreads her arms wide. Almost as if preparing to take off to soar high above the rain clouds. Or as if trying to catch all the falling rain. All that's watching you is a delusion. From where I am on the ground, I can't see the expression on that lowered head of hers. Behind this thin veil of rain, just what kind of face are you making? Go 
してあげる An angel? Are those dancing feathers of light blessing me? Or. I see. I finally understand. She's going to use that to kill me. The girl slowly kneels to the ground right before my collapsed body. With her head still lowered, she gently takes my own in her hands. I surrender my body to her grasp. I'm just relieved that she isn't looking at me. I'll put you to rest now. In my ear, I hear a whisper. Garbled by static. It's beautiful. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Hello? It's not, it's not, go, it's not moving forward. Oh. There's nothing to apologize for. If I don't disappear, the other me, the real me, will die. So, that's why I'm okay with this. In fact, I'm really glad to get erased by you. It's not as bad. That's not a bad end for a monster like me. I don't have any regrets. <clears throat> a warm, soft, gentle, sweet sensation. And miraculously, the shivering in my body slowly begins to die down. Her soft breath tickles my cheek. It smells so sweet. Suddenly, I sense something pressing against my chest. The large sh sword she holds tears through my skin, bores into my flesh, weaves through my bones, and, uh, but gifted with the anesthetic of her kiss, I no longer feel pain. Uh, I would never have imagined that uh, to get such a kind, this kind of death. Just the thought of it breaks my heart. Trying to hide them, I look past the girl's head, up toward the ashen sky where the rain continues to fall. And that's where it typically ends, right? So what's this, then? I can't do it. Oh? Her lips pull away from me. Her sad whispers trickle into my ears. Oh. Oh. I knew it. <laughs> I can't kill you. Taku. I feel no pain. Her sword isn't real booted. My body isn't injured in the slightest. But you have to erase me. If you don't, the real me will die. He will die. That's why I should die instead. That way, he can stay alive for just a little bit longer. I'm sure that's what you want, too. Erase me. <laughs> Erase all that I am. Dimi lightly shakes her head. Those eyes of hers waver as they stare at me. I love you. I love how weak you are. How, even though you're so weak, so cowardly, you let yourself be torn to pieces just to save someone like me. I love how strong you are. I want to spend so much more time with you. I 
don't want to lose you. I want you to live. You'll look at me? But I'm a monster. So am I. Oh. Is it okay for me to keep on living? If you so choose, it is more than okay for you to live. I hear a voice from the sky, and with that, I understand, because our minds are directly connected. I perceive a certain feeling, that right now, at this very moment, his life just vanished. Takami's dead, isn't he? In that moment, Bimi quickly sensed the emotions my face conveyed. Hesitating for a moment, I give her a faint nod. to my entire body. Warmth returns to my body as well. Even though my movements are still clumsy, even though I'm still trembling, with the hand I can move, I take out a vermilion handkerchief. Bimi's face is covered in tears. The droplets that are so beautiful, so clear, I softly wipe them away with all the memories you've given me. I love you too. <laughs> Bimi tightly clasps my hand as if she wishes to cling to it forever. As if to confirm that we exist right here. The warmth within us is contagious. Both my and your temperatures melt together. The two of us look up at the sky. Without a doubt, it's covered by clouds. But... Light is... composed of electromagnetic waves. The oscillations of these waves are what we perceive as color. Taku, those words. Words that only he and Bimi should know. Words that he used to give Bimi hope. And yet, I know them. Because I've seen his memories. He and I are one in body and soul. My memories and his are shared between us. His memories of the 17 years of life he lived were all passed down to me. And he vicariously experienced my own year and a half of life. If we apply the color we desire to our own dead spots, the color of our sky can be regained. We know that color because in that image world, of only sea and sky. It's the color we gaze up at and burned into our memories. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, audio's clipping out. Uh. Okay. Oh. They're making the sky blue. Suddenly the rain stops. In an instant, the clouds vanish. It's clearing up. Coming back, 
This is probably making my voice sound like crap, sorry. Something that, no matter where you look, always seems to draw you in. Gently blankets the world. The blue sky above. What? That that cannot be it. You better give me a, an end thing at the end. I did not wait all this time for her to just not kill him and that's it. There ain't no way. No freaking way. No. I, I refuse to believe that that is it. No, there has to be more. No freaking... I'm gonna be so mad. If this lasted like... A third of the time longer than Steins Gate, just for that. It's it's literally following in the same steps as as Steins Gate Zero. If it does that to me, I'm gonna be so freaking mad. Don't you dare! No freaking way. We better get like an end like sequence of things happening, of things going back to normal. And if I don't see Bond, I'm gonna freaking flip my lid. I'm going to be so mad. I cannot believe he just, if that's the case, that he just dies like that. With no no way to defend himself, just, just dies. Like, what the crap? What was his purpose in the story then? Like, he was just there for us to experience what was happening from a detective standpoint to see, like, how the, like, what was going on with the murders and all that. Just to be killed? I just, I can't believe that that's how it is. It can't be that way. You can't do this to me, please. I'm begging you. Oh, did did all the voice actresses do their own ending songs? Is that what that's saying? Yo, that's kind of crazy. Oh, these are all new, though. These are all new um, inserts. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't I was I was kind of noticing that, but I'm I'm a little frustrated because I don't want it to end like that. Surely it can't, right? Steinsgate had a had an end end credit sequence, but see, but where it ended in Steinsgate, I didn't necessarily need the end credit sequence. It ended really well. Like it ends in a satisfying way. This one did not, so I I need it. I need it to happen or I'm going to be upset. <laughs> Dude, and they, none of the other girls came in. I expected this to be so much more of like a them coming in and, you know, helping him out. And, and that was going to be because they, you know, all the Black Knights had to assemble, right? I mean, they technically sort of kind of a little bit did uh, in the first ending. But I thought like that was a broken version. I didn't realize it cannot be this way. It simply can't. I refuse to believe it. Hey, there's the Committee of Zero, though. Yeah, woo! Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. All of you, dang, there's so many of you, too. Man, thank you, guys. Man, you guys poured your hearts out into freaking doing all this crap for us. All this, all these texts. Please, please, please be more. There has to be. You can't do this to me. You cannot let that be how it ends. We're gonna have a problem if you don't. Oh, there's Sedaton. Okay. I'm just letting it play out. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm begging. <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> you, you can't. Is it? Do I have to click forward or? I was waiting for it to do it itself. No, I, maybe I have to do it. Oh, okay. There it goes. No! That is not how it ends. No freaking way! No! No, the prelude, what's that? Delusion of Zero, wait, the prelude, what's that? Wait. Congratulations! 
What? What do you mean? Congratulations. After that? That's what I waited for? This whole time? I can't believe you did this to me again. No freaking way you did this to me again. I'm so mad. No, no, why? Okay, wait, but this prelude thing, right? Maybe that's something? That has to be, they, they can't do that to me. Bon really dies? Are you serious? He never comes back? No, dude. And they never explained the, the woman's voice from, from Senna's ending, either. By the way, okay, let's check out this prelude before I freaking flip my lid anymore. Hold on. No way. I am so mad. Oh, what the frick? Oh, that's new. Oh, okay. Oh, and it changed. It ch it changed everything. Um. Okay. Fine. I guess. Maybe the prelude will do something different. Dude, I- okay. Here's what I'm gonna do, okay? If the prelude is an actual, like, episode-long thing, like, worthy of an episode, then I'm gonna add it into this episode. Uh, but if it's not- but if it's- or excuse me, no. If it's- if it's- if the prelude is, like, long enough to be its own episode, I'll make it its own episode, but if it's not, then I'll add it onto this one. So just in case, I'm gonna say right now, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you in the next video. God bless, and peace. But on the off chance that it's not, we're gonna see what this is, so let's, let's just... Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Delusion of Zero, a Chaos Head prelude. Okay. Before I pass on, allow me to recount my memories leading to this moment. Imagination is more important than knowledge, for knowledge is limited, whereas Im uh, imagination embraces the entire world. Those are the words of Albert Einstein. When his delusion, E equals MC squared, embraced the world, how had the man felt? Yes, what you summarize is true. The famous gifted physicist was, in fact, a gigalomaniac. Okay. And a fairly exceptional one, at that. My powers undoubtedly pale in comparison to his. Yet, despite my saying so, I unknowingly brought a similar delusion into existence. To deny that reality would be a fool's errand, for my delusion has already spread far across the world. I swear, if you say, like, love or something, I'm gonna be so... mad. Fun to the tenth power times intelligence or integer to the 40th power equals IR2. I believe I was in the fourth grade when I materialized that formula. It was also around the time when my body first began to suffer various abnormalities. Ever since its very birth, that delusion has slowly eroded my body. In a mere six months, I was no longer able to walk unassisted. At the time, I was not aware of my status as a gigalomaniac. I somehow managed to continue attending classes, but I proved unable to participate in an upcoming field trip due to my worsening condition. And so, despite my intense anticipation for the event, my parents forbade me from attending, which birthed in me a fierce resentment toward them for a time. From that moment onward, my delusions continued to engorge, delusions synonymous with nothing but pure evil. 
these very delusions would go on to injure my classmates, who had gone on the field trip without me, and kill the chaperoning teacher. Only then did I come to realize that I harbored a terrifying power. I was admitted to the hospital soon after. More time would pass, and, eventually, all the doctors present gave up on diagnosing my condition. All the doctors, save for one. Norose Genichi. Oh. Although I was fairly young when I first encountered him, it only took a glance to understand this man's true sinister nature. The two of us were alike, after all. Two souls far removed from common sense. Naturally, because of this fact, he proposed treatment for my condition was denied, and he was dismissed from my case. I was fortunate in that his successor turned out to be Dr. Takashina. Before Norose departed, however, I took the time to peer into his mind and learned of both Project Noah and Nozomi technology. The very hospital I had been admitted to also served as the lair of my enemy. If nothing was done, my delusion would be utilized by Project Noah, and grave consequences would befall the world. When I realized this, I immediately attempted escape, but that was when I grasped a terrifying truth. Only as a result of my treatment had I come to reach a form of stability. In other words, my body had already deteriorated to the point where I could no longer survive outside of the hospital. I was intensely aware of the fact that my enemies were always near. I kept them at bay with delusions, but my body grew weaker with each person I stayed. A vicious cycle that only served to further extend my stay at the hospital. If this were to continue, my capture by Norose would be inevitable. With no other options left to me, I was forced to erase every trace of my existence. I had ceased attending classes some time prior to that point, so, upon my classmates graduation from elementary school, I executed my plan. Our treatment of Nishijo Takami has proven successful, and he has thus been discharged from the hospital. This is the fiction I created one I implanted into the minds of my parents, as well as the entirety of the hospital staff. Any person who had any possibility of coming into contact with Norose was put under this impression. Then, using my delusions, I isolated myself in a hospital room separated from the rest of the building. But I was not able to alter everyone's memories. My younger sister, Nanami, proved to be an exception. Only she was able to enter the room with no semblance of difficulty. She did not even seem to recognize the room as separate from the hospital. Of course, whenever she took it upon herself to visit the hospital, I crafted a delusion allowing her to remain unseen by anyone present. Right? Yeah, I figured. Nanami, while quite childish, showed nothing but concern for me during my time at the hospital. Even on my darkest days, she put forth her best effort to care for me. Those moments showed me how strong she truly was, and I found myself unable to steal her memories away from her. Nanami, however, was not the only exception. This was the time I came to know a girl named Sakihara Dimi. Dimi had been confined to the hospital's basement for nearly a year. Every day, she would face brutal, ceaseless torture at the hands of Norose. But no matter how hard I tried to call out to her, my voice would never reach her. It was only upon her eventual awakening as a gigalomaniac that I finally managed to synchronize with her delusion. In that moment, I entered the world inside her mind, her image world. 
Whether that was truly for the best, I have yet to determine. The delusions she carries within her are endlessly sorrowful, and yet, they are also her reality. Unable to face it, she had killed her own heart and mind numerous times before I met her, destroying all remnants of her past selves. The formula born from my delusions had brought this girl endless suffering. For all these reasons, I saved her. Oh, yeah. My delusionary powers allow me to travel anywhere. In reality, my body is still incapable of walking, but I am able to create a door that leads to any destination. Producing these delusions requires a great deal of strength, however, forcing me to only use it sparingly. And yet, despite this fierce tax on my body, I would not hesitate to give my life if it meant stopping Project Noah. A project I had effectively founded when I allowed my delusion to spread across the world. And so, upon isolating myself, I began to pour every ounce of strength into halting the advancement of Project Noah. However, the skill my enemies possessed matched my own, rendering my efforts useless. They had established a defensive strategy and with it, the search for me had begun. If I were to make even one mistake, I would be discovered in an instant and captured. This manhunt would only serve to increase the danger Nanami was in, as the two of us were family. I had no desire to involve anyone in this fight, so I hid myself away from the world. In the end, I was naive and three years went by entirely wasted. During that time, I conjured numerous delusions, but each only served to weaken me further. If this were to continue, there would be no way of stopping Project Noah. For this reason, I decided to give birth to you. To achieve this end, I had to sever every link I had to society my final remaining connection to the outside world, to my normal life, was Nanami. Because of this, I was forced to erase all memory she had of me. I know that my actions caused her a great deal of pain. In our last moments together, it was clear how deeply hurt she was. Even so, I knew that pain was sure to leave her momentarily. As long as she forgot about me, she would be able to return to her normal life. Wishing only for her happiness, I liberated her from the burden known as myself. It was with Themi that I miscalculated. Naturally, I tried to erase her memories as well. I wanted her to forget about her awakening as a gigalomaniac, about her sickly torture at the hands of Norose, and that she had ever met me. I wanted to give her a normal life. However, Themi is an exceptionally skilled gigalomaniac. No matter how many times I tried to overwrite her memories, my delusions were deflected without fail. It was clear she was very experienced in locking away her heart all while wearing the brightest of smiles on her face. My attempts having borne no fruit, I abandoned all hope of altering her memories, and thus redirected my efforts. Creating a human from nothing proved difficult, even with the power of delusions. I've come to know that the human soul is incredibly delicate, that it is as elaborate as it is precise. In order to in order to create you, I focused completely on the personality the delusions would form. For an entire month's time, you were all I thought about. In a way, it was quite similar to falling in love, though I myself have never known the feeling. If you were to come to know this, I am sure you would feel repulsed. Essentially, you are me. My memories, 
my abilities, and finally, my name. I have entrusted them all to you. All right, so there's the you or me thing, I guess. But again, it's like, but you're not him. You're your own person, so... Eh, okay. The moment you are born, I will no longer be the boy known as Nishijo Takami. From that moment on, I shall take on the moniker Shogun. Oh, that, okay, that kind of makes sense. So he's saying I'm just not going to be Nishijo Takami anymore. Okay. Why Shogun, you may ask? Well, I quite like Togo Shogun. That is all there is to it. With that being said, once you are born, your role will no doubt be a very painful one. First and foremost, you must awaken as a gigalomaniac. To meet this end, you will have to endure an extreme mental load, a grave, unforgiving strain on your psyche. Once you awaken and grasp your D-sword, the battle against Nozomi technology will begin. The battle to stop Project Noah. That is my ultimate goal, and, by extension, yours. But I would be remiss if I did not say this. My reason for creating you was incredibly selfish, but I had no other choice. I cannot do this on my own. I hope you can find it in yourself to forgive me. When the curtain finally falls, you will be free. Once you are granted this freedom, please grant me this in turn. I ask that you turn a blind eye to my selfish desires, including forcing these memories onto you. And I ask that you be a good older brother to Nanami. Please. If I had the ability, I would have done this all myself. I would have done it while dreaming of the peace I would see once it all came to a close. It is a pleasure to meet you, Nishijo Takami. Yet, this is also goodbye, Nishijo Takami. Welcome to the world. Harsh battles await you, as do infinite possibilities. As long as the blue sky above exists, that fact can never be denied. You are me. And at the same time, you are also you. A hospital room none would visit, dyed orange by the setting sun. Clutching her knees silently in one of its corners, Sakihara Dimi noticed something strange occurring in Nishijo Takami's bed. His breathing had quickened. His chest, reduced to mere skin and bone, rose and fell rapidly with each breath. With a low gasp, Dimi watched as innumerable thorned vines slowly radiated from the bed's center. A delicate construct that appeared both metallic yet organic, with a beauty that rivaled even the most breathtaking of sights. Vines of such description colored the room. They crept and crawled over the walls and floor, overtaking every inch of the closed space the two resided in. Like the veins of a leaf, shards of translucent glass emerged from the surface of the vines, each pulsating with a flickering red light. Together, it was reminiscent of an eight-headed serpent, each branch possessing its own will. Nishijo Takami's D-Sword. Dimi had seen it only once before, but at that time, it had been confined to one of his weak, frail hands, wrapped around it as tight as could be. Nishijo Takami remained motionless on the bed. In spite of Dimi's attempts to inhibit him, she realized he had been successful in creating another self. As she gazed upon him, Memories resurfaced of the time she had asked him if he intended to die as a result of his actions. To this, he had merely nodded. 
Soon, the pulsing glow of the D-sword covering the walls began to dim. And before long, the vines began to dry and crack. As they crumbled away around her, Bimi slowly rose to her feet. Taking care not to run into any thorns, she cautiously made her way over to the bed. Standing by his side, she lifted her hand and gently caressed Shogun's desiccated cheek. Still, he continued to breathe. Would he ever regain consciousness someday? At that moment in time, somewhere in Shibuya, another Nishijo Takami had been born. Would she ever come to meet him someday? Until that day came, she would continue to wait here. For she had no family. For she had nowhere else to go. For she had no home to return to. No one waiting for her. Gazing out the window, Bimi looked to the many skyscrapers of Shibuya, each dyed a deep orange by the twilight, as a single trickle of tears slid down her cheek. All of this came a mere 18 months before the Shibuya collapse. No freaking way that's it! Oh my gosh, so they just explained, like, his backstory, but that's it. That's it? Like, uh, okay, all right, maybe, maybe in Chaos Child, maybe they'll have stuff there that will explain this, why it ends so abruptly, maybe. Stuff that they just didn't explain, who the woman's voice was, apparently, uh, that we heard in Senna's freaking thing, uh, ending. Um, gosh, that is so not satisfying. <laughs> I really hope that they pick it up in the next one. I, I like, I hope they pick it up like right from where we're at. Let me just check the extras real quick. Just, yeah, no, this is nothing. Okay. Dude, that freaking sucks. Uh, album achievement rate. Apparently I'm missing something. Some different song somewhere. Oh, why? Dude, I can't... Okay. I guess I should finally talk about the game now that we're here. I was waiting all of those endings before I gave any final, like, statement on what I was feeling. So, this is just gonna be word vomit again, so I guess just try and keep up. The overall concept that this game goes for in terms of delusions becoming reality, right? And and uh, this idea of gigalomaniacs out there in the world and that you can like create them via a machine and all that, right? That was, I think, the most, well, one, yeah, yeah, I would say it's the most interesting part about the entire story for me, right? Was just trying to see the unfolding of like, what does this formula mean? Um, what are they really trying to do with Noah 2? Um, you know, kind of the, uh, detective work we had to do along the way. I got, I think, like, a couple things right by the end, but there was a lot that I got wrong, and it's simply because I, I, you can't really predict in a game where anything can be fake. Like, there's no, you can't put two and two together. There is no two and two. Okay, there's, two and two equals five, so it's like, it's kind of just whatever direction the game decides to go in. That's kind of just what would happen. So I, I couldn't ever really predict what what was going to happen as best as I wanted to. Um, but yeah, that concept has stuck with me since I've been playing. It's really been the thing that's been pushing me through the game for the most part, um, which is both cool, but also I think somewhat infor uh, unfortunate because uh, unlike Steins Gate, I did not care about these characters as much as I should have, okay? The only one that I cared about the most died. <laughs> and I hate that. I hate that that's the one character that I really wanted to see what would happen with him and, like, you know, if he'd figure everything out, which he technically, I mean, he figured out a, a good 
decent amount. Like, he would have, I think, gotten to Noah too and all that. He would have figured that much out before Sua got to him. But, um, yeah, Bon was the one I cared about the most. And, like, I like a lot of the girls, you know, for different reasons. Um, Kozoi is still, I think, my favorite out of all the girls. Um, but, like, they just, their, their stories and their personalities and all of that just weren't as compelling to me as what I felt Steinsgate did. Um, it felt, I don't know how to say this, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it, but it's not, I don't know if this fully encapsulates what I'm thinking. It felt like the story was trying to be a little too edgy, right? This definitely feels like a first attempt, you know what I mean? It feels like they definitely were trying to really go for shock and awe value at different times. You know, and, and for good reason. I mean, they built it into the story, right? Like, having these horrific things happen to you is what wakes you up as a gigalomaniac. It's just the fact that all these characters' lives were kind of built around this concept. Um, it was almost like overkill. Like, it was like too much, right? And that's kind of what I liked about Steinsgate is that the characters in that were all just normal kids. You know what I mean? Like, they're all just... They were just hanging out together doing dumb experiments that didn't mean anything until suddenly they did. You know what I mean? Um, it, it, they were all just, you know, living their normal lives, doing whatever, and it just had a more organic feel to it. And it had also, I felt like the stakes continuously kept raising as time went on, where with this one, the, the stakes were there in terms of, like, we have to stop project noah before it's completed and all that right like before it's you know fully you know done or, or whatever but it just it, it wasn't compelling enough for me to to really care what was constantly pushing me was because like i was starting to get feeling like i was feeling this way after the first ending um but i was like well let's see what the 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 crying ending is and okay let's see what some of these routes do you know i I, but when I got to having to do all the routes, I was like, the, the girls' routes, I was kind of like, man, I really hope that, like, the ending is worth it. That's why this hurts so bad that it just kind of feels lackluster because I was like, there's nothing that really about any of the girls that I really super cared to see, you know? Like I said, I liked the endings. I think that the endings were fine. Um, and, you know, out of the ones that I was seeing, like, procedurally, right, I liked Yua's, and then I was like, oh, yeah, Yase's is pretty good, too. And then I really liked Kozue's just because of how insane it went and, and, you know, how we basically just became serial killers. We became the monster we were afraid of becoming. Um, with Senna's, I liked that they were doing this weird thing with the, the, the baby. I was trying to figure out all of that. Um, but, but all of those were just, like, kind of pieces I was hoping would eventually become a whole. And then they didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, so that's what was keeping me kind of latched onto them. Um, so again, yeah, maybe Chaos Child will show some of that. But if it doesn't, if it's its own story, what the crap, you know? Like, this just ends. This 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 story just ends. Yes, they, they made the sky blue and they can delusion the world. Maybe, maybe the insinuation is they made the world what they wanted it to be again, where... Like, Senna has her family, and Kozue knows who she is, and Bon is alive, and Yua's, or I, Mia's sister is alive, you know? Like, maybe that's what the insinuation is, but but without that payoff of actually seeing it or, or experiencing experiencing it in, in, any, in any way, like, it, it feels bad. Like, it just, it feels, it feels like you went half-cocked, like you didn't finish the story, you know what I mean? And then, see, this is the problem that I had with Steins Gate Zero that all of you guys had been telling me, well, you got to watch the, the, the anime because they kind of tie up some loose ends that the, the, the visual novel didn't. And so eventually I was, I've been considering since one of you mentioned it a long time ago uh, about doing like a watch through. And I obviously I can't just show each episode on YouTube or anything like that, but I could skip around maybe and and just show pieces, highlights of where I'm, you know, commenting on things and stuff like that. Um, so that way, maybe I can see for that, you know, story, like, if, if it does have a satisfying conclusion. Um, but, but yeah, this ends like Steinsgate Zero did, rather than how Steinsgate did still. So I have to say then, out of the three games I've played so far, Steinsgate still is the best one. 
it has the most concise story. It wraps everything up by the end. You didn't have to do Steins Gate Zero if you didn't want to. It, it, it's a perfect finish for what they were trying to say. All the themes, all the story elements are, are, are wrapped up by the end of that, right? Whereas in this game and in Steins Gate Zero, there's still, there's still like a bunch of questions that just are left unanswered. And a lot of kind of emotions that are still floating around, you know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't really care that much about like Bimi and, and Takumi's relationship all that much because we spent a majority of the game hating her, right? Being afraid of her because we didn't know what she was. Like they wanted us to like her, but also to be wary of her. So I could never really get connected to her because I was like, well, she could stab us in the back at any given moment, you know? But even once they showed us that, no, she's on your side, it just, it didn't really do it for me. I don't know, like, I was hoping there would be more intrigue, like more mystery in terms of um, finding out about Project Noah and this the, the concept of delusions and all that, but, um, and there was some of that, but it was mostly shown through Bon, and that's probably part of the reason I, I had such an affinity for him, because his sections of the story were always about trying to figure out what the crap is going on. You know, what is this GE rate and, and like, how does, how is that affecting people's behaviors and stuff like that, right? Like, that was what I was interested in, in a similar way as, like, that was a big intrigue for me in the beginning of Steins Gate, where, where uh, Kuditz is, like, explaining time travel, right? And we're, like, hearing all the theories of time travel and how they work and why some work the way that, or like, uh, why the way that Steins Gate's idea of time travel works when other theories don't work or something, right? And that learning those elements while moving into uh, the the kind of catalyst moment of the story, I guess, was a, uh, or one of them anyway, um, was like that was what was fascinating about it it was a slow burn but i felt like i was like getting this sense of like intrigue and like who is cern and all this stuff and it's like this looming threat but also like ah, it's kind of in the back of our mind right like we're, we're talking about it like it's this big entity and it doesn't really matter until suddenly it matters you know what i'm saying um and so this this game didn't do that Quite as well, which kind of makes sense because again, it's a first attempt. Um, but I don't know, man. It just it, it it left me feeling rather unsatisfied. I was really, you know, toward the end here, especially in the last couple of routes, I was really trying to be like, okay, let's just chug through these, let's get through these, you know, and still trying to like keep up the energy. But it was just like I was hoping I would get, I was hoping eventually that feeling I had would turn around, and it just never did, you know. Where with the original Steins Gate. I actually really enjoyed going the separate routes. You know, they were their own complete little stories. But then the actual final end was, like, perfect. It was, like, exactly... Not just what you would hope for, but, like, it made sense. So it didn't just... It, it, they didn't just give it to you because, ah, give the people what they want. It actually felt like this This was what it was building up to, and this is... this It, it mattered, right? Like, that was... Like, it was very poetic by the time it was done. You know, I used that word a lot when I, you know, had finished that that uh, game. So this one just didn't do that for me, um, you know, and I liked the characters as far as, you know, just like from an immediate, you know, kind of glance. But it wasn't like I didn't feel like connected to them. Right. Like I really was connected to Okabe in in Steins Gate. I was really connected to Mayuri. I was really connected to Suzaha. I was really connected to, like, pretty much everyone except Daru, <laughs> for the most part. Um, I really wanted to see what was going to happen to them and, like, what their stories were. And, like, I just, I really liked them, you know? So, so even if the story at any point was a little slow for a moment, they were carrying it, you know? But this game, one of its fundamental flaws, which is also part of its strength, weirdly enough, uh, which kind of goes into the next you know, scenario, I guess, is, uh, or the next point that I have to make, is um, that Takumi is such a hard character to, like, actually, what, what is the word? I'm not going to even say to like. It, he is a hard character to be in the shoes of because 
he is so not the person anyone wants to be, right? But what he stands for is the person that everybody is, right? And I've said this through the whole game, you know, once I kind of came to the realization, I've been saying it all the way through. Um, so this isn't like new info or anything, but it's very obvious to me that they created Takami to basically point a finger at literally anyone that reads so that when we're looking at him and saying, wow, this guy's a degenerate, wow, I don't like the stuff he's doing, that we would hopefully self-reflect and say, oh, wait, he's just like me. You know what I'm saying? Like, he does the same things that I do. Uh, he he has the same issues that I have. Maybe in a different way, but it's the same type of a thing, right? He has, I don't know, sexual sin. He has paranoia. He's a coward. He's uh, weak. He's fragile. He's all these things. He's, he's isolated, right? He has no friends. Nobody likes him. All this stuff, right? Um, he... he you know, wishes the worst for everybody and, and carries these thoughts in his head, but then when it comes time to actually face somebody, he, he just backs down from them, right? Like, these are all things that people think and deal with in one way or another, at some point or another, if you're honest with yourself, right? Like, me, myself included, and the rest of you, like, we all like to, like, follow heroes, because I did, okay? I, I loved following Okabe. He's far more of a hero than, than, uh, than Takami is. Um, but we like to put ourselves in the shoes of heroes because we like to think of ourselves as the good guy. But Takami forces us to look at ourselves and say, we're not the good guy. We're not heroes, right? He specifically says it like in this big expositional like kind of monologue that he has. He's not the hero. He's a monster. I'm not, I'm not meant to be this hero that saves the day. I am a coward. I am an otaku freak that sits in his room and does nothing else but play video games all day and watch Blood Tune on, on, uh, on, you know, my computer, whatever. So it's like, how many people like to think they'd be the hero, but then when they see the burning building, they run away from it, right? That's what I feel like Takami stands for. He's, he, he is kind of the cautionary tale character to say, you know, this is what you don't want to be like, right? And if you don't want to be like this, then you have to take corrective actions to not be that way, right? Like, you have to step outside the container, right? You have to go meet people. You have to face horrible truths and, and terrible horrors that mess with your psyche in order to awaken, right? You have to face stress and you have to face pain right that was a big thing for him i don't want to feel pain i don't want to feel pain um but you have to in order to grow that's that's how you gain perseverance right is not just by learning the lesson but by having to actually go through the trials and tribulations to learn the lesson that's that's all part of you know having a holistic character right of uh, not 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 like just a character in, but i'm saying your own character you know your your good natured good willed character whatever you want to call it um that's all necessary, you know what I mean? And so I feel like that's that's kind of like a big theme that they've tried to really build into Chaos Ed. And uh and and in that regard, I give them really high praise for doing that. That actually was again one of the things that I enjoyed the most once I finally came to understand it even in the degeneracy right even in the perversion even in all the bad stuff that he does you're able to look at it and say oh wait yeah no i'm i'm kind of like that in my own way too i have my own it's like it's the idea of like my sin looks bad on somebody else right like that's it's that same kind of idea and if we were honest with ourselves we would say yeah no i even if it's not the exact same we can say yeah i I know what that's like, you know, and so, hmm, maybe I need to work on myself, too, and build up my own character, right? So, um, but, but that aside, like, that, that theming aside, it is so hard to be in his shoes also because he is the way he is, right? Because he's a degenerate. I literally played as Daru the whole game. I said it since episode one. I'm like, oh no, please don't make me play as Daru, please. And that's exactly what he is. He he was Daru. And um Yeah, it just it's it's really hard to to want to follow a character that you just don't it's like he may be relatable in terms of his depravity and the things that like, you know, the the bad elements of him, the negative elements of him, 
but but I still want something to hold on to, right? And I, I tried to nitpick things you saw along the way, like, oh, he really is down on himself, like he's super self-aware. That kind of helps you like him a little bit because at least he's not a total narcissist, right? Like he has some self-awareness to say, yeah, no, I know I say all these things, but really I know the type of person that I am, right? Um, at least in that regard, you can say at least he's got some accountability for himself to some degree, you know? Um, and he does things, you know, every once in a while where it's like he, he does what, you know, he thinks is the right thing to do in, in any given moment. But but he's just so hard to follow and to want, especially when you're playing the game over a, a, the span of a year. You know what I mean? It's just like, man, I just really wanted him to have some redemption at some point. And they kind of try to do that, right? By having him stop you know, Noah too, but they do it in such a way that he's saying, I'm, I'm stopping all of like what could be a, a conflictless world, um, for humanity in order to save a girl. So again, he's like, I'm still selfish. I am still a monster. Right. And that literally actually physically takes form when he's like, you know, replacing himself right there at the end. Right. So you know, there's some poetry in that, um, but it's like, it almost, I, I don't know if I'd say it almost needed to just like, if it wasn't going to give him redemption, then it almost needed to just sink him into despair totally to really show like, here's the consequences of your actions, right? It'd be like if Hamlet got away with it <laughs> in a way. It's not the exact same. It's not a one for one, but it's the same feeling that I get where it's like, if Hamlet wasn't torn up about killing his uncle, throughout the entire story. I think that's that one, right? It's not Macbeth. I think it's Hamlet that that, that happens. And that's the whole, you know, Alas, poor Yorick or whatever. Um, like where he just slowly starts to go insane and thinks that, you know, becomes paranoid, thinks everyone's out to get him so much so that he kills even the people that he loves and all that until he finally ends his own life because he can't handle it, right? Like he can't handle what he's become and, and all that. Like that's a good cautionary tale and it's 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 it still is impactful and you can still even relate because you're like wow yeah i can feel what hamlet's feeling but yet know that by the time you get to the end it's like you know that that i'm not supposed to like this person i'm supposed to learn from this person right and it makes me think of like all the characters like there was like there was like a there was like a meme i've seen one time where they put like walter white and like joker and uh, Daniel Day-Lewis from There Will Be Blood and like all these different characters uh, that are these like they, they say it's like the uh, the um, people I shouldn't idolize uh, yeah like something like that like people I shouldn't idolize a uh, starter pack or whatever right and they're all characters that yeah you shouldn't idolize them you shouldn't want to be like them just because you find elements of them relatable right like because they're not good characters they're not good people you're supposed to learn from them and say, oh, they feel everything I'm feeling. They basically did all the evil I could have done if I chose to want to, you know, walk in their same footsteps. But now that I've seen where that led them, I'm going to turn the opposite direction, right? Like that's what that type of a character is meant to do, right? You see them, you see them devolve into insanity and into complete narcissism and nihilism and whatever else you know, you're supposed to see that and say, yes, I'm going to go the opposite direction, right? Um, and you're compelled to do that because you you relate to them and what caused them to get to that place in the first place, right? Takami only does that halfway, right? Because, because they give him somewhat of a good ending. They give him, like, where he can... He's allowed to live and all this different stuff. And because we don't get a payoff to, like, does he change his, his, his life around or, his, you know start to become different now that he has Demi and and like again Miss Mikun must have been real that was another thing like I thought he was fake through the whole thing but he must have been real uh because from Demi's ending we saw that she changed his uh she she gave him delusions that 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 they knew each other and all this so I'm assuming he was real but he was kind of just there you know uh, again it was kind of like wasted potential to me he's just there he, he's just a supporting side character that doesn't really support anything. He's just there to be like the antithesis to like what 
Takami is. He's everything Takami wishes he could be, even though he's not really a good person himself, you know? It's still, like, he's just got the confidence that he wished he had and all that, you know, was good with the ladies and all that stuff, right? But I digress. It's like, I just, I feel like they tried to to pull on a, a, a couple, like, a few too many strings rather than keeping to, like, a concise idea. You know what I mean? Like, well, I won't say about Steins Gate just in case. I think I've already said too much. I'll probably have to put up uh, um, some spoiler alerts just in case from the little bits that I've talked about with Steins Gate. But um, so I'll, I'll, I guess I'll you can you can go watch that and find the end of that and you'll see what I'm saying in that one kind of. But that that game just did it differently. OK, I'll just say it that much. They 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 spun the story differently. And so, yeah, there's there's things that I appreciated and liked about Chaos Head, but there's also a lot that I, I felt not only could have done better, but just like, again, was it was just, it felt left undone, which leaves me unsatisfied, which leaves me frustrated, right? Um, so unless there's something that I don't understand, so if there's something I'm not seeing, like if there's, you know, you know, something that I need to do to be able to get like a true, true, true ending or something, which the guy didn't tell me that. So I don't think there is. But if there is, then I guess post in the comments below and tell me how I, you know, am dumb and don't understand this whole game and, you know, whatever. Because there's a lot of a lot of you guys and a lot of people I've read like on Reddit posts and, you know, other places, things that I follow for for the Science Adventure series that people say this is their favorite in the entire series. And I just don't get it. I I would I would never say that. <laughs> I think again, I think there's concepts in here that are really cool. Again, I love the idea of delu uh, um of delusions becoming reality, right? And this idea of this conspiracy of these people, you know, trying to use this machine that casts mass hysteria and mass delusions onto people. Not not to just make them slaves, but to just alter their decisions ever so slightly so that they, you know, uh, vote for the person they want them to or whatever or act in a certain way that they want them to so that they can make their own goals happen, right? It, uh, it, it, it you know, and then you see Norose who takes that to its fullest extent, which is let's just take away their free will altogether for the sake of humanity, right? Um, so some of those elements and the, the bits when we were finding stuff out about that, love that, that was great. I wanted to see more of that. But, um... Yeah, just in comparison to Steinsgate, it just doesn't compare. It just simply doesn't. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't really know how much more I have to say. Again, Momose, just gone. They just left her undone. I thought she's supposed to... I, I was assuming she was going to be the, the lady we heard in uh, Senna's ending, but they never showed it, so I guess I'll never know. Um, yeah, it, it just... Technically, Bond dying is a way you can end it that way. It just felt like that. It just felt like he, his story was cut short really fast. You know what I mean? Like, it just was like, he's just, he's done now. He's gone and we're moving on from him. It, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's why I kept thinking, oh, he's got to come back. Or, oh, you know, in the blue sky ending, I'm going to have to replay through all the game again. And when it comes to his section where he's going to get shot, like, you was going to save him or something. That's what I thought because they even led up to that. They, like, they led up to it and then they just, they just stopped short. You know? And, like, it just completely, like, uh, it, 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 it's anticlimactic almost in a way. So... Yeah, I don't know. It just lots of unsatisfying stuff, I guess is all I can really truly say. And I'm trying I'm still trying to think if there's anything that I'm missing um about like any of the delusions or any of that. I guess that's another thing. Yeah, technically with the delusions, it's like I wish the delusions actually had more impact on the game since there's so many of them. Cuz really they don't mean anything. They just kind of are there to like, "Oh, do you want to have a bad delusion or a positive delusion?" And it's like sure but like I, I want it i want my choices to matter i don't want them to just kind of just be there you know unless you're like building that into the game of like that that your choices like you know sh you know don't actually matter in the long grand scheme of things kind of like bioshock infinite like what they did with that um but dude i don't know man i just i i, I don't 
I, I feel like this just is kind of incomplete in terms of the total idea they were going for. So my only hope can be that in Chaos Child, they either pick up where this one left off or they make sense of this one through whatever story that they're doing. I'm hoping in the next game that we see something that that gives us some closure about Bond. I hope we see some closure with Momosei. I hope we see, um, you know, like what happened at the end here, like to see that, like what, what that became. Um, if it's, if it's literally what Steins Gate Zero was, which is just, oh, here's, here's like an alternate story kind of line in a way, like it's still part of the story, right? But it technically is like, like they, they, they say like, this is what all that had to happen in order for the first game to happen. But at the same time, it's also kind of like, like just an off branch in a way. If it's like that, I don't know, man, this kind of feels like lackluster you know and that's kind of being kind i feel like in, in a lot of ways but um yeah i don't know like we we had like orihara burning her 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 uh clothes or whatever her old school clothes which i'm assuming was from the last school she was at so i guess that was technically tying into that right because maybe it was because she killed those oh yeah because wasn't there like blood on them or something like that so she was burning i don't know something like that i guess maybe they talked about that but um we never had a wrap-up of of yeah like freaking i just remembered senna's dad hatano what happened to him he just he just gone and maybe I'm not remembering the first ending well enough because it's been a while now, but did, like, did they do anything else with him? Or did he just disappear? No, because he died, right? No, he died. They, they said that even in this one. So he he died protecting Senna from Sua. So, okay, I guess he, he did at least, you know, have a conclusion there. But man, it just feels like, I don't know. They They... They didn't want to have a completely tragic ending, so they just kind of... It, it feels like they went, like, halfway and then stopped, you know? It's like, a lot of the characters have sad sort of endings, but yet, you know, let's give Takami, the person that didn't really do anything to deserve, in any way, shape, or form, a good ending. Let's give, let's give him a good ending, kind of. But also, like, not show what that becomes or, like, what he becomes because of it, right? Like, we got to see what Okabe became uh after his actions in steins gate right like we got to see what that looked like we got to see the impact it had on him we got to see like how his character arc, how how he changed as a character takumi never really fully i mean his that's kind of the thing right he never changes he never has a character arc and that's probably part of the reason that i'm frustrated is because like I know, like, the idea would be, no, but the point is supposed to be that he is a monster in, in whatever, and he came to realize that, but he kind of always knew that. He always, like, so he never, he never had any true dynamic shift in his character to learn from, you know? He didn't go from being, like, a paranoid kid to being, like, courageous. I mean, technically, you could say it was, quote-unquote, courageous that he saved Dimi, but he was already in that bad scenario to begin with. You know what I mean? Like he was he was not um he 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 was he was captured by Norose. So it wasn't like I mean I I think he did go there. I think he was No, I mean okay. I'm kind of remembering from the first ending. He he was like, yeah, I have to go save Dimi because I want to. So he was I guess technically he was becoming a little more courageous, but it, it, the rest of his personality was still kind of trash, you know? Like he was just like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to forgive you, but I do kind of forgive you by the actions that I do. And so I guess that kind of showed forgiveness. It, it just, I don't know. I don't know. I guess they did have some kind of an arc there, but he, he doesn't, he doesn't ever seem to really like truly have a, a change of anything. At least, at least not one that's satisfying. Let's put it that way. Okay. If there was a change, it just didn't feel satisfying to me anyway. So... I don't think there's a whole lot more I can say here. So um, I think I'll just call the rant there. And if there's anything else that comes to my mind in the meanwhile, I'll throw it in the the comments. Um, but 
yeah, I, I think that encapsulates most of my feelings, at least for now. Um, and maybe some of, you know, maybe you guys can duke it out with me in the comments if I'm not getting something or I'm just not understanding, you know, you just don't get it, man. Maybe I'm like, maybe I'm not connecting the, the cork board pieces together or something to really, but I don't know. It just, it, this did not do what Steins Gate did for me. Um, I, I would, I would almost argue to say that I liked Steins Gate Zero more. And that's probably just because I liked the characters more, um, you know, so they still kind of carried it for me. Uh, whereas with this one, characters are fine, you know? I wouldn't say they're memorable, but I wouldn't say they're necessarily forgivable e either. Um, they're just not, they just didn't, they didn't, they didn't, I, I, I didn't like super, super care about anybody, really, you know? Like, yeah, I didn't want anything to happen to like Orihara or, you know? Uh, Dimi, though, I was supposed to probably care about the most. I was kind of like, eh, I kind of care about like Senna and Yua and like Orihara the most, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, and I guess from here, before we get to, um, Chaos Child, I'm going to go through all of the delusions and all of the, uh, you know, neutrals that I didn't do, um, through my normal playthrough. We'll just start right from the beginning. I'll go down and I'll do all the positive, all the negative, and then all the neutral and just see, just kind of as a, as a cleanup episode to see what I missed. And so apparently I've already gotten most of the lewd positive ones. So yippee, I guess, for me. <laughs> At least I don't have to deal with that. But, um, yeah. And then once we do that cleanup episode, I guess we'll move on to Chaos Child. So it's making me wonder too, aside from Chaos Child, like it makes me wonder like what Robotic Notes is going to be about. Because that one seems so much more casual. Just from like the couple screenshots that I've seen, um, I don't know anything about it other than I think Daru's supposed to be in it, which like, why? Um, but I'm curious to see where that goes. I'm I'm really curious to get to Anonymous Code eventually, because man, I just, I that one looks really cool. I hope that one actually is satisfying, because um, it, it I really liked the art style that I saw, and then you know stuff like Occult Nine. I don't know if we'll ever get those over here, so. But I heard that they didn't turn out very good anyway. So, yeah, you know, whatever. So I guess with that, thank you all so much for watching. And I hope to see all of you ruffians in the next video. God bless and peace.